Okay guys, so today, for today's um, tutorial on the uh, Crafters Companion Christmas Compendium, we're going to continue on, but today we're going to use the embossing folder uh, images, I guess, I don't know how else to call it. So just to recap, we've done embossing folder on the very first one where I unboxed the whole thing. Um, if there is a link in the description box, if it's still available, it will be an affiliate link, which means I will make a small commission if you purchase the box. Uh, through that link so thank you guys so much um, and then you know we did the stocking and that was fun and then I showed you guys how to do something fun with those dies that come in the kit because the dies are very basic especially these with the ornaments they're just one layer there's no shadow there's nothing to trim unless you want to cut up pieces I, I don't know <laughs> you know whatever you want to do but I show you guys how to make this with a cute little shaker element and um, this was one of my favorites here and then um, what else do we because that was a few different videos and then we moved on to the cracker which yes took some work but it is very cute I mean I don't know how you want to use it but um, I think this is one of my favorite of the 3d projects because the next one was the house and this was in my opinion super disappointing but you know some people really thought it was cute and some people were like yeah I don't know it looks more like a church and to be honest I probably should have done this little thing up here and then some windows here and I guess it would look more like a church I don't know so you know it's just something else again it was just extra in there but I think if they went to do the stamps they might as well have done dies and everything else to really deck that out I thought it would be really fun but moving on um, today uh, all I did was take everything off the top layer. That's why those cards were sitting there because I've been putting everything back where kind of, you know, to store things in there and everything else. But so in the initial video on the unboxing, I already did all of these um, folders. So I'm going to see what's here because like I said, I just took everything off the top of the box and then I was like, that's what I'll use today. Um, so again, the papers are like this uh, red and gray and green and a dark blue. And I was thinking there was black in here, but there's not. So we will see. I might incorporate some. Maybe I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, the papers. I'm just trying to see where's the truck. I guess the truck might have been in a different layer. Where is the truck? Oh, well, so the papers are as such. And we've already gone through these. I'm going to use these today because all we're going to do basically for these embossed images is layer them up so it's gonna be pretty basic at the end of the video for the little church I was like let's get back to making cards because that's basically in my opinion what this is about um, so we do have uh, the envelopes here and we have our card bases and so today for this I think we're gonna use a square card base so there's little tiny like tags I mean these are three inch squares I think these are four by six and people keep telling me this is like a popular size they're doing now because it's a a6 size and a6 is like four and a quarter by six and a half or something like that these are four by six, so they're smaller than an A6. It's kind of an odd number, okay? And I already, I measured them in that same video, but people kept telling me the same thing. I'm like, yeah, I measured it. It says it was four by six, so it's not an A6, almost. It's, you know, interesting. I, I'm having a good time decorating them. I thought that was kind of fun. I did use it on one of my other cards. Where was it? I don't remember. But, um, but it's okay. It's just a different size. So this is a six inch square. And I'll put the envelopes this side. We're not going to use these right now. I probably should put the box here next to me so I can put the things back in the box. Um, oh yeah, this is the one I, I had measured. Uh, that's why that's out. It does have some stencils here, which would be really nice. I haven't worked with the stencils yet, so maybe as far as those kind of stencils. I did use the other stencils, obviously. Um, we have all these nice little stamps in here. And I'm hardly I have used the stamps yet, but I probably will get a sentiment from this because we will need a sentiment since that's one thing I always leave off and people ask about. Um, again, whenever I take the time to make a card, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, so I don't. But this is obviously a Christmas card. So we have the sorted ribbon with the girl grain, the um, satin, and then that organza or organdy, however you call it. This layer has these uh, dies, and I used the Merry Christmas on that card I showed you. There's Happy Holidays. There's the Village, which is really pretty. I, I want to get to that because I think I love this kind of thing right here with the Santa and the sleigh. And then, okay, there's the Cracker. Let's put this to the side. We already did this one. And so I already tried these out, as you can see. Um, the both of these things right so I had just run them through real quickly on scraps of paper so I'm going to cut these down a little nicer all you're going to do is take whatever paper and I obviously got the paper from the kit trim it down these are um you can trim it before or after you run it through your machine but if you're putting this through your Gemini mini you better trim it down because it's not going to fit if it's any bigger than this right um this is two and three quarters by 
I would say five and a quarter almost. Eh, more like, I'm sorry, not five and a quarter, five and three quarters, a little bit less than five and three quarters. So you can trim down your paper that size, slide it in there, put it through your Gemini Mini, put it through whatever machine. Again, Marquis, uh, you know, the uh, creator there, the uh, my contact at Diamond Press says not to run 3D folders through them. I know you guys say you have done it. I don't know, especially these, they're especially thick. You guys saw how I struggled with it, running it through my Anna Griffin machine. So your junior just use the you know the sandwich that is appropriate for this guy or through your gemini machines there's also these little ones again you would do the same thing that i'm going to show you right now just a little sentiment and you know maybe you can even layer some of these up i don't really want to i want to do something different but um so we already have these cut so what i'm going to do is trim these down so that they're a little nicer <laughs> they're kind of messed up looking and i'll tell you what the sizes are of them and we'll just uh, layer some up and see what we come up with. Oh, and then we also have these gemstones. Right, we're going to use these because we need some umph, right? We're just going to be very flat with this. Um, so I'm going to start off with the truck. The truck is, I think, in the second layer of stuff, but it doesn't matter. It's just you need something. And this is the thing. Look how it already takes up a lot of the size. All right, we're still going to do it, but this kind of changed what I was thinking in my mind. So we'll see. We're still going to use this guy. I might have to trim it down just a little bit more. Okay, and you can look in your book here and see kind of what they're showing you that you can sketch out, um, you know. You know, maybe for this one, let me see something real quick. For the truck, I might have to go with, this is a five by seven. Okay, so this is a 5x7. Let's use this one on the truck, and we'll do it this way. That gives me a little more room, as you can see. I'm s I don't really want to take off too much off the front and the back. This is already 5.5 inches, as it is, just kind of small. Let me see. I do want to trim this side a little bit. It looks a little bit crooked. So with this kind of project, you really have to have everything lined up really nicely. I think we're just going to keep it this size. Because if I take off any more, it's going to be really claustrophobic as far as the edge of... The things so again all i did was run them through with the embossing folder and then when they came out i used my nail buffer this yellow block i have always here and just sh 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 you can find these at the dollar store things like that but buy them cheap don't buy a craft block because those are gonna be more expensive right this is literally just for nails it's just a smooth even a sally i think they sell them for like 60 cents just rub it over the top as much as you like to bring out that image right of the little truck okay so I'm going to do this one on the 5x7. I'll probably do a very similar thing on this one. Um, again, this one's kind of taking up that whole space, but let's do that. And so all I'm going to do is layer up. Just layer, 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 layer. So let me look at the pieces of paper that we have here. And I'll pick out what I think might look best. And then we'll just um, layer it all up. Okay. So for right now, I'm going to use these colors. I still want to do another strip maybe behind here. We will see what happens. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side for a second. These are the two colors I'm going to layer up on here or two papers so we have just the green paper that's in there and I'm gonna really mat it up real close so if this is a five by seven I think I want this to be let me see five by seven I want it four and seven eighths so it's gonna be really small around there four and seven eighths and I'm eyeballing that seven eighths right so that's another reason it could be a little off whenever I end up cutting but four and seven eighths by, oops, I'm gonna move over to the bigger guillotine. By six and seven eighths to make that work. So six and a half, six and three quarters, six and seven eighths right here. And then this one, I don't know how tight I want that. Let's think. Let's go four and five eighths. Oh, you know what? This one has a direction on the paper. I don't want to get wrong. So this actually has to cut a little bit wider. We have to do the seven inch side first. So again, we did um, six and seven eighths on that one. So I'm gonna do six and five eighths on this one. So six and five eighths by four and five eighths. And we're just gonna tape that, glue that down, and glue it down to here. So 
So again, I just made those numbers up. So <laughs> you can decide. Do you like eighths? Um, do you like quarter inches around? You know, do whatever you like. I know the image is kind of big, so I kind of need it to get out as far as I can. And I am going to use a wet glue, even though normally I would just stick it down with... Um, uh, you saw me reach for that tape runner. Because um, I want to make sure that I get this nice and put down right. Now, this would be a cute one to... Um, distress the edges of your paper, which I didn't do, so I'm not going to, well, anyway, you just go around and do that, just to give it a little extra something, since there is not a lot of dimensionality going on with this card, you know, just to add a little something else. So super close to the edge, as you see there, right? Because I did um, four and seven eighths by uh, six and seven eighths, so there's our sixteenths of an inch around the edges. Again, don't let that math scare you. Just cut what you like. If you like quarter inches, eight, in eight, seven inch, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you like. And then this one, I did a quarter inch smaller all around from this instead of just an eighth of an inch smaller. So that's why this one is um, four and five eighths by six and five eighths. So it's going to be a little more green than there is white. Okay. So where this is a sixteenth of an inch around here, this is a um, an eighth of an inch around here. Now. I'm going to pop this guy, even though this also has a pattern to it, I think it's going to look really nice. So I'm going to put the red over this green, right? Because we need a little something extra. And to be honest, with something like this, you could just tape it down and then shoot, eyeball it and cut it. But um, I think I measured this at two and three quarters by five and a half. Two and three quarters by five and a half. So I'm going to cut this paper. To... This one needs to be bigger, right? Because we're going up. So this one, if I did two and three quarters, let's go ahead and do three by five and three quarters. So all I do is add a quarter inch all around. So it's only going to have an eighth of an inch all around the image. If you want more, you know, go up by more. Look at that. Even the deboss side is actually really cute. But we're using this side. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to stick that down right there. And again, I'll use the wet glue, especially with this because it's an embossed image. So you always want that glue to really get into the little nooks and crannies so it doesn't lift up later. So wet glue is always good for this kind of thing. And to be honest, I thought this was going to be a quick video, but I've been talking about <laughs> how to work this for a while. All right. That paper also had a pattern, but it was more geometrical and it didn't really matter if it needs to go left or right, up and down. It's the same. Okay, so that's kind of my idea on this one. I'm going to make it obviously work this way. And then, um, you know, you can put it down the corner, up in the top. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be right in the middle. It, you know, it can be wherever you like. You want to put it up here and then put your sentiment here. You want it here, put it to the side a little bit, um, which is kind of the thing I always like to do. But I still wanted something behind it. Is that weird? I don't know. So what I'm going to do is it needs to be red, I think. <laughs> It needs to be red, so we're going to use a strip of red paper. Do I have one already cut into? I do. So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to make it go all the way across to this green, right? And then another pop of color on top of that. Now we have this Merry Christmas paper cut up, but that's kind of busy, isn't it? Let me look at these uh, papers and see which one I think might work. I'll be right back. So I looked through here, and we have this nice plaid. I thought that might be cute because it has the red and the green. Kind of more of a manly looking card, I suppose. And so I just grabbed a piece of the red, cut at one inch by six and seven eighths. So it goes right to the edge of the green. And this is three quarters of an inch by six and seven eighths, okay? So let's just stick this one together. I, I, I don't know why I keep leaving this to lay down because then it takes a while for the glue to come back to the top. Okay. And again, wet glues are our friend with this kind of thing if you're not real good at matting. Because <laughs> that way, it's just going to work. You can move it around a little bit. Okay, and that's going to lay flat right here. And I think this is then going to pop up a little bit. Like in here. Just adds a little something else. I just don't know if I want to put that right in the center. Because again, like I said, I like to put things in different... Hmm... 
Maybe I'm going to put this in the center. Let me think about my placement real quick. And while I'm doing that, I'll think about maybe adding some gems and something else. And <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Not hundred percent, but I'm going to cut out this sentiment and see where maybe that's going to help me. And what's funny is the Merry Christmas is stuck together, but the Happy Holidays is two separate words, which I think I like for this. And again, there's blues and reds and greens. There's not a lot of blue in the paper. I don't know where the blue comes in. Um, so I'm going to cut this out in black, which is what I've been doing recently. And I like the way that looks. So I'm going to cut out the word happy holidays or the words on this real quick and see if that helps me kind of find my placement. Cause I'm like, eh, I mean, I would just put that together, put some gems on it and I'm done. But since we have a sentiment, we need to figure out a place to put that. And maybe you don't need a sentiment. Maybe you put the sentiment on the inside. I don't know. I was thinking about using the stamps too. I just forgot about that. I guess the stamps could stamp on there. I don't know. Let's see guys. I do like that there are two separate words. That's cool because you can play with it. So it was hard for me to envision what I was going to do. I'm like, eh, I don't know where to place this. Let me see. Cause I feel like we can even place some of the words on here, but then that's kind of weird. Cause this one's going to be down here, you know, over the tires, but maybe that's not the worst thing or maybe you put the happy here and the holidays here but that's kind of odd especially because I'm gonna pop this up hmm maybe maybe I do put it on here even though I don't want to cover up my truck too much I don't know no I think that's probably the best place for it, especially just the way I built this up so um All right, that's all I'm gonna go for. <laughs> it is kind of odd. Well, let me let me look at this a little bit more. Let me play with it a little bit more. Okay, so you guys know I made that band go behind the guy, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna use it down here, put the happy holidays on there, pop this up, and then add some gemstones. So completely not what I was thinking. <laughs> so that's, that's just how it works. Um, I'm trying to see how green some of these are. Oh, that's pretty, I just lost one. This is an interesting green, let me see. Oh, they're so pretty. I was thinking about going with red, but you know what? Might as well do a few green and let me open this thing up. I probably should have had this open in my thinking here about this. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put these in the corner like I like to do. Just in that top corner. You can put them, you know, wherever. It'd be cute with some poinsettias. I've just, there's lots of things obviously we can deck this out with. I was just, again, because the card's so flat, it's hard for me to kind of think about doing something else a little out of the box, outside of the box. <laughs> All right. And even that little small dot of glue can make it spread out. So just be careful with your glue because a lot of times um, I can see already just hitting it with that, it's already squeezing out the edges. Look at that. It's all around. And that was the littlest amount of glue. Let me close in a little bit. Let me remove some of this glue since we don't need that whole amount. <laughs> so much glue. The smallest amount and it's like, no, no, no. Crazy. So use very little glue, guys. I still went over. So what I normally do sometimes when that happens, I'll take the other side of like this tool and just kind of rub around the edge and take the glue away. It does dry clear, but it does dry shiny. So it'll be noticeable. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put some glue on the back of my hand. And you guys already know my pat, 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 pat. <laughs> now this is something people have been doing for a long time. This is not something I came up with. So I know people are like, oh, that's so genius, but um, it's not my, <laughs> my tip to have given. It's super old school. All right, let's see here. I don't know where to put this. I guess right in the center, huh? Well, that worked out. <laughs> the sizing I did on that worked out real well. I'm gonna do the same thing, pat, 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 and stick it down on this side. Now I wish I would have done a little bit of distressing with a scissor or something. I'll do it on the next one. I'll probably do the other one, work it up on my own because it's not the biggest deal. It's just layering things up and then I will um, distress that and you'll see what that kind of looks like. So there's that this thing oh i left it laying down <laughs> it was i told you guys earlier i'm like oh i don't know why i leave this sitting up because it doesn't uh i have to wait for it to come back down and i left it laying there and now i got all over everything all right okay 
3D glue gel or your dimensional, whatever it is that you like to use. Trying to be careful with it since I just put those gems on there. And this is basically how I would use these things. Um, you know, obviously do whatever you like. I kind of want to layer it over that, but I don't know. Eh, I guess it needs a little space. All right, guys, and that is it. So hopefully that gives you some idea to kind of dress that up. Maybe put some ribbon, put some poinsettias with, you know, cut out whatever it is you like. Add more gems, but it's a quick, hopefully quick, easy card. And I hope you guys like it. And I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.